Hello everybody, welcome back. It is me, your old pal Orpheus, with another adventure here on Orpheus Plays. And yes, today we are playing Star Trek Fleet Command. I am a Trek nerd, no way to hide that. So uh, we're going to be playing that a little bit in the background here while we talk today about LSD. Yes, <laughs> D-Lysergic Acid, the uh, wonderfully uh, hippie-based uh, sort of psychedelic drug. And uh, believe me, your old pal Orpheus here has quite a bit of experience with this, good or bad. Anyway, we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, I hope you are doing well wherever you are today, whether it is day or night, or you're sitting there at a Doctor Who convention and, and you're going, should I be Matt Smith or David Tennant or should I be Peter Capaldi? And so you get all the outfits instead. Not saying that that's something that I have done, but <clears throat> anyway, hi. <laughs> How you doing? All right, so today I kind of wanted to talk about something that um, I haven't really heard a lot of things going on about it these days, and it's not like I'm plugged into the party and rave scene, really, so everybody calm down, right? Um, I'm not plugged into that sort of society anymore. I, you know, I'm a family guy now. I'm a house husband. I make YouTube videos and stuff like that, so it's not like I'm going to, uh, to raves every night or anything like that, or even in the last... 20 some odd years anyway <laughs> I'm so old oh Jesus so it's uh it's it's something that I used to get into quite a bit back uh in my college years and um it is in my opinion something that uh it, we need to talk about this because there's a lot of debate. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of things going on in terms of like a discussion with this. And I've seen a lot of other uh, channels that discuss and, and, and address, you know, drug use and, and real life experiences and stuff like that. And I think that's good, but I want to pull it away from the pure, like, Oh dude, you know, psychedelic experience. Let me tell you about what it was like when I dropped a bunch of acid this one time. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, and I'm not, I'm not picking on any specific channel. Calm down. <laughs> I'm generalizing everybody just, you know, chill out. But, um, I want to talk about it kind of honestly and openly, um, no real opinions either way, given right off the bat, or maybe even at all. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to start any controversy about it in terms of like, um, whether you're a bad person or a good person for doing uh, LSD or for dropping acid, however you want to tell, uh, you know, say it. Um, I just want to share kind of some of my experiences with it and, and maybe um, just some thoughts that you might want to have uh, when you approach the subject. Now, uh, I'm going to briefly go into the broken history of LSD. I don't know all the details, so everybody just chill out. I, <laughs> I am not a Wikipedia article. I'm not looking it up. I'm just doing all this off the top of my head, which is how I do most of my content. I don't really research anything or, you know, this is just all like, eh, let's talk about blah, right? <laughs> so uh, as I understand it, uh, LSD was discovered as an accidental chemical uh, by a scientist back in the 1950s I don't remember anyway uh, they started to discover that it created these uh, these experiences that opened your consciousness and could could do things like um, rewire parts of your brain for uh, you know temporary periods of time where you'd you'd see smells and you'd you'd hear colors and you know it, I want to uh, look. I'll get to that in a second. I'll, I'll get to how like th there are some there are some very strong misconceptions and and blown like way overblown uh, descriptions of things that y we need to talk about. <laughs> That's kind of why I'm making this video. Anyway, it was discovered that this was a um, sort of like a, not just um, a drug, right? They they discovered that it was actually sort of therapeutic. That allowed people to experience thoughts and uh, you know uh, situations and things like that with a different lens um, it allowed people to approach um, like brainstorming issues differently um, but then there was kind of the, the Jacob's Ladder experiment sort of thing uh, the US military experimented on a lot of soldiers 
uh, by giving them LSD and kind of watching what they would do because it was interesting. Uh, the, the military thought that they could use LSD as some sort of wartime supplement, right? You give it to your soldiers, they don't care about things and they go out and they're ferocious fighters or whatever. They wanted to figure out like most things that we, <laughs> like most things that the military, you know, comes in contact with. They want to, you know, what does this do to our soldiers? Okay, well, so they tried it out. Not that successful. Uh, LSD doesn't make you want to fight. It makes you want to stare at a wall. Anyway, <laughs> so um, you might hear of someone called Timothy Leary. Um, yep, yeah, right there. Timothy Leary is kind of hailed as this uh, pioneer of the LSD uh, era where he's, you know, he, oh, I tripped so many times and it's this magical thing. And you can hear him just drone on and on and on about it. It's like this, this gateway to the, to the other worlds and other dimensions. And like, you know, they show fractals and like, uh, <laughs> what are they called? Uh, uh, Engelbrot <laughs> like uh, things anyway, like Paisley and all that stuff. I, th I think some of it, it, it kind of had this stigma that was attached to it during the 1960s. The, those summer of love kind of times where the hippies would drop acid and go, you know, I'm going to go to the to the Grateful Dead concert. and I'm just going to like, you know, zone out and watch the walls melt and everything. Um, there became this culture that was associated with dropping uh, acid because... Let's be honest, uh, Timothy Leary, if you ever watch any of his stuff where he talks about acid, it, it's weird, man. He <laughs> like he, it looks like it just totally fried his brain completely. And whether or not he was a weird hippie beforehand, not a lot of people know. Not, I, and hell, I don't know if he was some weirdo beforehand. I don't know if he was some weirdo afterwards. I know that he was a complete freak when he was like recording all these interviews and like, you know, research tapes and everything about how Oh, you know, it makes me uh, take my mind through astral projection out into the universe. It's like, shut up, dude. So let's talk about um, why it is uh, kind of hailed as this 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 mythical kind of dangerous thing, right? Well, you may have heard somewhere along the years, like if you get caught with the by the cops with, I don't know, 20 doses, uh, 20 pieces or tabs of acid, as they're known. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about the semantics uh, in a sec here. But if you're caught with, you know, 20 tabs of acid, oh, my God, you're going to get charged with 20 attempted murder charges. Uh, calm down. No, <laughs> that's not how that works. Uh, LSD, while classified, what is it, a type one? I think it's a type one right up there with cocaine and uh, heroin and stuff like that. LSD is very much a controlled substance, but it is also used in a lot of different places. Like, I think it's legal in a lot of places in the world, actually. But it's used, um, like, if you've ever heard of ayahuasca, uh, ayahuasca is a kind of like a... A short-term, like, nitrous whippet kind of version of LSD. Because LSD can last anywhere from, oh boy, uh, 6 to 15 to 20 hours. It depends upon what you have <laughs> and how your body reacts to it. Again, I'll get to some of that stuff in a, in a sec. Oh, man. Um, but, like, it's... It's this mysterious thing because it, it messes with your mind. I guess the best way to put it... Um, it temporarily, for the time that you are are on uh, the acid, it kind of gives you schizophrenia for for the time that you're on it. Um, you get different symptoms that you normally wouldn't. The, the different things present in your brain that normally aren't there. Like I said uh, earlier, you can like see uh, you know you can see smells and like uh, you know smell colors and like. A lot of it is is lights and and tricks that your brain does to your vision and your sound and stuff like that. Um, so let's address whether or not. Oh, I was sitting there on acid and I saw a bunch of elves run into the room and they were all Technicolor and painted like Smurfs. And then they started dancing and and they pulled out trumpets and started playing, you know, Ode to Joy. And and then everything in the room started swirling and like, no, stop it. Okay. <laughs> Before we go on, I want to just tell you of, uh, I guess, my my notches on the bedpost when it comes to uh, taking LSD, uh, as it were. Um, 
when I started going to college uh, at a large college, uh, I was immediately looking for ways to unplug. Uh, I had never been on my own before. I had always been in an environment that was very strictly controlled, uh, very, very regulated, uh, very abusive as well. And so the first time I got out uh, by myself in college, and it was a summer program, my parents, I graduated from high school, boom, immediately I was in uh, summer courses at my at the college of their choice. But anyway, um, I was, I was going to some of the classes and immediately I was like looking for parties, looking for places to go and new experiences. Right. I had already smoked pot a few times before that. Listen to me. I already smoked some pot, some reefer before that. Um, but I had, and it was, you know, something I very much enjoyed. And it was something that we started, uh, I started, you know, toying with at college as well. I started doing a lot of research on, on marijuana too, which is weird. Um, the college that I went to was one of the ones that the government would use uh, to grow cannabis that they could study. <clears throat> and so I went and I talked to a lot of those botanists and I, you know, I learned about the different strains and you got to realize, man, this was like the early nineties. So, you know, this kind of knowledge didn't really come out to the public until like 2006, 2007, when like the first real medical places, medical marijuana places started popping up in different uh, states and stuff. So like back then it was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm learning all this stuff about cannabis. And then I was at a party. I don't even remember how I got to this party. It was uh, at someone's house off campus. And it was like one of those things where like five or six college kids will rent a house and then completely destroy it over six months or whatever before they get kicked out or stop paying their rent or just leave or whatever. This was one of those houses. Uh, it was just, I think, like seven or eight people uh, like were renting it. And there was a ton of people there, 100, 150 people, all just kind of milling around. And there was, you know, your typical college uh, uh, party favor refreshments, like your alcohols. Uh, there, you know, people were smoking, you know, the green there as well. Uh, there are some whippets, uh, which, you know, you know, nitrous oxide. Look, I am... I just want to stop and say real quick, I am not endorsing, condoning, or glorifying any of this. Uh, it is all a series of terrible decisions that I made throughout college and afterwards, uh, in some cases. Uh, and uh, I, it is not something that you should do uh, without seriously considering what sort of consequences it will have on the rest of your life. And again, I'm, I'm sharing these stories to educate you, um, maybe to give you a little chuckle about some of the dumb crap that I've done, but also to give you a perspective on whether this is something that you should even consider. And I will, I'll come out with my own opinion and say, don't do any of this stuff. It's, it's stupid. It, you're risking things that you, you don't know what you're risking until you get there or you, you're done. Uh, again, I'll get into that in a second. Um, but you're not, don't do things that are stupid. And if you're going to choose to do anything in your life, make sure it is in moderation and under circumstances that are controlled and safe and somewhere where you can feel comfortable. Okay. Disclaimer out of the way. Don't be dumb. Okay. Don't, don't be dumb like your old pal Orpheus. Anyway. So I was at this, uh, this house party, people are going, you know, la 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 la, having their fun. And one of the people that I was there at the party with comes up and says, oh, you want to drop some acid? And I'm like, oh, do what? <laughs> you know, like I had known, of course, I had known what acid was through pop culture and movies and TV and, you know, stuff like that. And it was Damn, if you see, even these days, you, you look at and you see people, oh, I, I'm going to drop LSD, I'm going to do some acid, you know, in a movie or a TV. It's like you go on this magical Technicolor cartoon adventure with them, or like, like in Deadpool, right? <laughs> Where, you know, he gets the knife in his head um, and starts seeing all that, you know, trippy kind of stuff going on. That is... Okay, that's he's not dropping LSD, but that's how it's portrayed a lot of the times in media, where it's just like you, things are going on that are all weird and like you know, it, and it's kind of the same thing with mushrooms. Yes, I've done mushrooms too. They're very similar to LSD, but they work in a different way. Um, so some of the experiences kind of cross over. Maybe I'll do an episode about doing shrooms as well. <laughs> God, what did, what did I do with my life? Anyway, <clears throat> so. Um, 
I'm at this party. The guy offers it to me uh, and I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I, he says, oh, you know, you just put it in your mouth on your tongue and, you know, spit it out after a couple minutes or you can eat the paper or whatever. And, you know, you'll, you'll start tripping in about a half an hour to an hour, man. And if you're not familiar with how this works, there are a few different ways that you can get LSD. Um, there is a gel tab form, which is kind of like, uh, they kind of take it and put it into like a gelatin kind of thing. It's hard to describe the ones that I've had over the years were triangle form, I think anyway, or you can do liquid. Uh, there is liquid LSD. That's kind of like the, like the pure uncut stuff. Uh, some people have like, I drip it in my eye and I'm like, okay, bro, you calm down. You're, you're getting a little too, too heavy into this. Um, and then there's paper, uh, paper, the paper tabs, which is what I did most of the time over the years. Uh, and this is why it was kind of dumb. And I will explain why starting now <sighs> LSD does not stick to paper. Okay, on a chemical basic level, I'm just going to kind of lightly touch on this because I'm not a scientist and I don't. It was just explained to me a few times over the years. So here, here's here's this little nugget of wisdom. LSD, the chemical itself, apparently doesn't stick to paper. Okay, but chemicals like strychnine or speed, like, uh, you know, different uh, sorts of uppers or, or stimulants do stick to paper and they also stick to LSD. So apparently you need some sort of, uh, like middleman kind of in between chemical to make everything bind together. So what they'll do is they'll take a piece of paper, usually about the size of like a post-it note, right? Uh, something like that or maybe a little bigger. They're called sheets, right? Obviously sheet. Okay. So they'll dip that in the first chemical and you're like, did he just say strychnine a little bit uh, ago? Yes, I did. Uh, and that rat poison, quite literally rat poison. Uh, they will dip it in there and then let it dry. And then they'll dip it in the LSD and then they'll let it dry. And sometimes they'll dip it a couple more times in the LSD. Well, why strychnine? Well, it bonds apparently very effectively <laughs> with the uh, the LSD and the paper, uh, but it also causes uh, some other kind of psychedelic effects. Um, there are some, if you've done LSD, I, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about and why it's so hard to describe. It's this metallic kind of thing going on in your mouth and in your teeth. Um, but it also causes these really, really intense, like sparkly kind of, uh, um, white lightning flashes in your vision. Um, like it, it, it puts your teeth on edge. It makes you feel kind of tight jawed and everything, but it also causes these sparkly, like crystalline kind of, um, these weird white and they're, they're set on the black background. It's especially bad when you're in a dark room or you close your eyes and you just see these like crystally sparkly things going on and they're real, really intense. The problem is though, that like later on during your trip, about like five, six hours in, uh, that metallic taste and those, uh, those kind of crystally things, they stick around a lot longer than you want. And that's obviously because, of, well, it's rat poison and it, it lodges is in your body and it stays there for a while and it is really not good for you. Uh, obviously <laughs> it's strychnine. I mean, come on. Um, but they also will, will dip it in speed. Sometimes there's a, dr a triple dip. When I say speed, I don't, it can vary, right? It's some sort of stimulant, uh, like, uh, sometimes they'll do, what is it? Benzedrine or, uh, sometimes it's meth, like this is something like that. And that's, uh, to kind of like keep you going. And it also gives, it adds a little bit to the, the kind of trippy experience. Um, but the, also the problem with that later on during the trip is you want to go to sleep at one point and you can't, <laughs> and you're trying to just kind of wait it out by sitting in a coffee shop somewhere, like smoking cigarettes and, and drinking coffee and just kind of, you know, everything is weird and, and, and blown out and the saturations turned up on everything, you know, in terms of colors and you're just exhausted. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I dropped this acid at this party <laughs> back to that, right? Ooh, we're jumping all over the place. Welcome to brain damage. Um, so I drop this acid, I wait my my half an hour, 45 minutes, and I start to notice 
everything starts to look a little blown out, right? All the colors are, are starting to exaggerate a little bit. And no, not like cartoon, you know, bright, you know, oh my God, I'm living in, in Bugs Bunny world. No, nothing like that. Um, just things started to like kind of become very vivid, right? Um, and, and very interesting too. Like um, I would sit there and like go into a bedroom and I'd flick the light on and all of the, the shadows, um, all of the, the shadows in the room would kind of like turn into smoke and kind of like into the corners of the room and into the, the, the darker parts of, of like closets and stuff. And it would like, it was the weirdest thing as I would just see it, like flick the light on and like all this smoke would just kind of poof everywhere and, and just get sucked into corners and into parts of the carpet and stuff. And so like, I would sit there for 10 minutes and flick the light on and off and watch that happen. And like, Oh wow, man. Um, I would just go downstairs the worst, like the worst night that you can, you know, the drop acid. The, we all watch The Exorcist. <laughs> but the thing is, when I was on acid, it didn't really, it was funny. Like the things that were in the movie were kind of funny. Uh, I sat in the backyard and stared at the, the chain link fence. Uh, you know that little effect when the fence, like you look at it just right. George Carlin talks about this, where the fence goes right in your face and you're like, Suddenly, instead of being 20 feet away, it looks like it's like inches in front of you. I would just try to find different ways to stare at the fence and make that happen. Um, food and things like sex didn't make sense. Um, like someone at one point was, was during that night was like, oh, I got a turkey in the freezer. Do you want to like cook, you know, some turkey? And I was like, why? Why would we eat? You know what? What? What is what is the point of eating? Right. My brain got to the point where it's like, I don't need nutrition. I don't even understand the concept. But they're like, oh, why don't you cook the turkey? Um, I took the turkey and just put it in the oven and turned it on. Uh, no, I didn't unwrap it. <laughs> no, I didn't thaw it. No, I didn't take the giblet packet out. Uh, after about 10 minutes of smelling weird things, the other non LSD using people at the party, uh, managed to yank it out <laughs> and, and throw it across the room and, you know, put it out in the sink and stuff. Uh, Again, none of it made sense to me. It was like, oh, you know, they're just uh, putting it across the room, ah, right? <sighs> that night was weird. Um, it's especially terrible because there's a certain point, and again, if you've done LSD, uh, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about here, where you've gotten, you've managed to go to sleep, right? You're about eight hours in uh, to the trip or, you know, six or seven. And you're really tired. You want to go to sleep. So you, you manage to get wherever you are. You lay down, you go to sleep and you wake up a few hours later and you're like, ah, right. You, you wake up and you look around a little bit and you realize, ah, shit, I'm still tripping. Right. <laughs> damn it. Damn it. I don't want to be tripping. And then you get that thing where you're like, am I going to be insane forever? Because like I said, it kind of gives you schizophrenia for a while. Like you, you hear, you can hear voices and, and colors that aren't there. But again, not this weird, like there's nothing that kind of, I've never been a person that's hallucinated, like in terms of seeing people walk into the room or again, cartoon characters or the walls melting or anything like that. I've, I've never seen anything like that. And maybe you're saying, well, you just haven't done LSD the right way or the, the stronger stuff. Uh, uh, calm down. Yes, I have. <laughs> I've, I've done it from people who've like, you know, made it because they were chemistry kids at like a college or something. <laughs> And yeah, I've never, I've never been a person who's hallucinated from it. I know a lot of people have described that. Uh, I'm, I'm hesitant to believe it. I think, uh, your brain may trick you into thinking that that's what you saw. Anyway, it's kind of complicated. It also may be for me that, uh, because I have brain damage and, uh, schizophrenia to begin with, it may not have worked on me quite as, as, uh, it, it does on other people. Um, so I, I continued to try acid, you know, or drop acid once every, every week or so when I was at that college. Uh, I went to another college in New York. Plenty of stories about that that I've covered on this channel. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, but I started, I, I was at a college and I had a roommate um, who was, uh, he was well connected. Let's just say that. Uh, he grew up in Brooklyn. He was a good old Brooklyn kid. They 
and he he knew a lot of people. And so I was like one of the first days that I was there and, and like met him. I'm like, there's two things that I like to do to relax and it's cannabis and LSD. And he goes, I can get you both of those. And the problem was I didn't have any cash. Uh, my parents had given me a credit card. <laughs> oh, boy, this is dumb. So what I did was um, uh, I would take him shopping. Uh, and I would like buy him a, a new pair of uh, shoes or a jacket or something. And then he would go and, and get me the equivalent amount of <laughs> whatever it was that I wanted. And he would bring it back and just kind of dump it on my bed. Um, so <laughs> I don't know how he paid for this stuff. Like, I guess he turned around and sold it. But I, I saw him wearing a lot of the stuff and using a lot of stuff that I bought him. But anyway, whatever. So he would bring uh, LSD back. And I... Oof for months i i dropped acid at least one tab every night for boy it had to be three or four months at least um yeah <laughs> and the thing that i i mostly would do is i had this uh this program on my pc that was like it was like a techno kind of rave thing going on and you could like grab the screen with your with your mouse and it was like light and and techno music and like you could kind of tweak it and mess with it and that like stuff that's completely dumb these days like you'd, you'd give it on an ipad to like a kid to play with but back then i was like wow right or either that or i'd lay on my bed and i would stare straight up at the ceiling and i put a um it was like a black hole, uh, black light poster, right? Except in, instead of a, like uh, cosmic gases and stuff, the black hole like arms and everything were made up of like little little blocks, uh, like little rectangles, and they were different colors. And I had had I had a black light on that I would just kind of flick on up on the ceiling, and I would stare at the ceiling and like in my mind, and what I saw was rearranging those blocks. Like I'd uh, in my my head and like apparently hallucinating but this isn't like full-on hallucinating like you can stare at an optical illusion are you tripping balls no you're staring at an optical illusion well okay <laughs> so combine those two things i'm staring at this poster i'm rearranging the blocks and like just watching it swirl and stuff and like the amount of time i i spent just laying on that bed staring at the ceiling hours and hours just weird 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 i don't know anyway i wasted a lot of my life on that now, we're not talking about something, oh, you know, Orpheus, you haven't discussed the, the biggest thing that everyone talks about when they talk about LSD. What is it? Good and bad trips. Okay. Well, the concept of having a bad trip, um, it's kind of, it kind of is a, is a self-compounding issue, right? So <laughs> if, if you're going to drop LSD, the, the thing that you want to realize is you should do it in a safe place place with people who can definitely look after you who are not on in in the under the influence of anything that's going to uh distort their sense of reality um make sure that they're people that are uh, who are kind and compassionate and willing to to have fun right willing to kind of guide you through life and like i had friends over the years that would they'd take me by the hand when i'm on lsd and like walk me through a field right and they'd say oh come here and they'd, they'd kneel down in the grass with me and say you know well, put your hand on the grass like kind of kind of just feel it under your hands and like get down here and look real close at it or or like oh look at this dandelion and like all of the little poofy things and right and, and you'd stay and like, ooh, right? Make sure you find somebody like that who's going to be able to just kind of guide you and like almost like a kindergarten teacher kind of thing, right? Because that's the mind frame that you're going to be in. If you're in a loving, caring, and compassionate and supportive environment, your trip is going to be la la la. You're going to, you know, fun and happy and hippie and, you know, playing guitar and enjoying the bright colors and stuff like that. But if you're in an environment where you feel unsafe, or you're in some side of, sort of place where you're by yourself, or you're you're you got the the mindset going in of like life sucks, so I'm gonna drop some LSD and forget about everything. Ah, uh, you're gonna have a bad time, and it's things like you start freaking out about the way that you're feeling, right? And this is something. That 
<laughs> where I've I've heard it so often in the news uh, over the years, like a couple will uh, discover cannabis edibles for the first time, right? Or a friend will suggest it or something and they'll go, oh, you know, I, I'm going to take a 10 milligram thing. And like an hour later, they're like, I don't feel anything. And so they'll, they'll, they'll eat some more and then they'll wait and they'll go, I don't feel anything. So they'll take some more and then it'll all hit them like uh, an Two hours or two and a half hours in, your metabolism's different. Everybody like experiences it differently. And then they'll start like they've taken at this point like 60 or 70 milligrams for in and if you're new to that, oh my God, right? So you get these people calling 911 and they're like, I took a bunch of edibles. I think we're gonna die. Cause you I mean, look, you can't die from overdosing on weed. It doesn't happen, right? Um but you really will have a bad night, <laughs> like the one of the worst nights of your life. If you OD, you're not really ODing, but if you take too much uh, like cannabis edibles or something, yeah, you're going to have a bad night. And it's kind of the mindset going in, right? So you can do too much LSD for it to be hazardous for you. And no, no matter what you've heard over the years, there is not some mythical person in an insane asylum somewhere who thinks he's an orange and tries to peel off his skin all the time. There's no one that has been and taken so much LSD at the same time because they were running from the cops and they had the piece of paper stuck to their skin and they absorbed all of the acid. And so now the only way that that person feels sane is if they're on LSD and when it wears off, they go back to being crazy. None of those things are real. Okay. No matter what you've heard and no matter who that friend is, who says, I have a friend who knew that guy or no, they don't. No, they don't. No one. There's none of those situations that have happened. Okay. The worst thing that can happen is you damage your psyche, right? You, you get to this place where you, you feel that your body, every single ache and pain, every single heartbeat is, is panic inducing to you. And that can compound upon itself. You can feel worse all the time. It just starts cycling in and like, oh my God, that must be my heart is pounding because I'm, I'm, I'm having a bad trip, which is making me having a heart attack and, and that's going to make me even worse. And so you panic and panic and panic and you have this horrible time. And then you kind of, <laughs> you kind of realize that, oh, this is, this is all kind of slowly going away, right? You, you feel sweaty and crappy and horrible and, 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 and it, it makes you feel terrible. Now, there's a debate as to whether LSD and, and taking it uh, a lot can do anything to damage your brain. Now, as I've said for most things, uh, moderation is key for whatever you do, whether it is taking a shower too long. Uh, these forever showers. Stop it, folks. Um <laughs> Whether you're taking a shower for a long time or you're drinking a lot of water or you're drinking a lot of beer or you're smoking a lot of pot or you're, I don't know, running a lot. If you don't approach those things with moderation, you're going to you're going to cause some trouble in your body or your life or whatever it is. Right. So moderation in all things is important. And so overindulgence in something like LSD is far worse than overindulgence in some other sort of substance. I mean, it's up there with things like heroin, cocaine, uh, meth, crack, things like that, because we while the apparent, you know, the, the effects from things like, you know, heroin and, and all those sort of heavier drugs, those effects are very apparent and very uh, understandable and very observable. Right. You can see someone who's done meth for a while and you do a before and after picture and oh, my God, they look like a zombie ghoul. Right teeth falling out and then like a uh, crap all over their face, scabs and everything. That's very apparent, right? You can see the damage. You can feel the damage, right? You can, you can see they empty their bank accounts, chasing that dragon of all those drugs. Well, with LSD, it's hard to see whether it's having this negative or positive impact. Now the positive parts, yeah, you know, you can, it can bring you into a state of more, uh, well-being, right? There are a lot of studies that use, um, LSD uh, to help people deal with things like death, like the concept of death, because there's a lot of times when being on something like acid can sort of it gives you this idea that there's something else out there. And that, and again, if you've if you've tried these things, you know exactly what I'm talking about and how hard uh, it is to vocalize why you can you sometimes come away from those experiences, uh, those nights when you've done LSD or mushrooms or whatever or ayahuasca. Um, 
you come away from that feeling like there's more, right? There's, there's something else out there in the universe. And that can translate, you know, into a less of a fear of death, but it can also translate into like a more openness and connected feeling to the world. Well, what they aren't talking about is what is that doing to the processes in your brain? Right. Because a lot of what LSD does is it reroutes things. Right. The signals go different places. Uh, the things that make you feel a certain way uh, stimulate other parts of your brain and, and make you feel another way. And so taking a lot of LSD, does it rewire those those synaptic pathways in your brain? Does it make it so they don't function as well? Is it an oncoming sort of thing with Alzheimer's or with Parkinson's disease or something like that? Well, because it's a much more subtle kind of chemical process. Oh boy, it's hard to tell. There are so many other factors when someone does one substance, right? It, it, it's very unlikely that someone's going to have a average healthy life and they do everything normally and they exercise three times a week. And oh, by the way, I drop acid every weekend. And that's the only thing, you know, the only factor in my life that can tell you whether or not I developed something from it later in life. There, there is no, <laughs> there is no person that's like that out in the world. And there's no studies that are done on anybody like that. So, so, you know, it's it's hard to, to have any correlation between like LSD and Alzheimer's or LSD and, and something else like that, especially because a lot of the people that were doing it aren't old enough to, you know, exhibit those those sort of symptoms. Yes, the people back in the 60s uh, were doing, you know, LSD. And yes, they're old enough now to present those symptoms. But we're having a rise of, LS, uh, of LSD. We're having a rise of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and age related diseases. They're all going up right now. And I think it's just mere numbers, right? The baby boomers, they're called baby boomers for a reason. There was a huge number of kids that were born, a huge generation of people. Maybe they're your parents or your grandparents, but there's a huge number of people in that generation. And so, yeah, there's a rise in those mental disorders and those conditions, but it might just be because it's just a, a number more people. Now, have has it impacted me in my life? Again, I don't know. I started the journey with brain damage. I came out of the journey with brain damage. Uh, it doesn't seem like my brain is made of Swiss cheese or anything on the scans, but there is damage to the core of my brain. And when I've tried to discuss it with therapists and doctors over the years, I've always gotten the same response, kind of a shrug, like, meh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe not. It, it might have We don't really know. It's, it's hard to determine whether things, you know, like, so... Oh, yeah. One more thing I wanted to discuss, and that is flashbacks, right? Um, LSD is uh, it, it binds to the fatty tissue in your body. But more than that, it also binds especially well to the fatty tissue that uh, insulates your spinal cord. OK, uh, so it can settle in your spinal fluid and it can settle in that kind of uh, the fatty protective uh, tissue that's around the cord itself. And so when you uh, do something like crack your back, and it's not necessarily every time you crack your back, uh, and it's not even the main way that that gets, you know, kicked off, um, <laughs> you'll get this kind of thing where suddenly reality just kind of kind of unplugs for a second. And some of you may have had this, you know, as you're going along. It's absolutely normal. Other people do this. I'm about to relieve a bunch of you of this secret, like uh, feeling, am I crazy? Oh my God, am I crazy? You ever been driving down the road, like on the highway or something, and suddenly it's like, what, what, where, how did I get here? What, what was I doing? What am I? How did I get in the right? You know, that kind of thing where you're like, oh shit, what reality just kind of bubbles on you and you go, oh, right. <laughs> you just kind of suddenly wake up. Don't worry. You're not crazy. That happens to everybody at some point in their lives. Some people a lot more than others, but it's kind of like that, but it's like multiplied by a whole bunch. Like suddenly there's a pop and you're like, everything's so pretty, right? <laughs> like, you're just like, ah. And for me, it's like, if it happens when I'm listening to music, suddenly my whole body just kind of goes like, ah, right? Like, it's so... <laughs> it's the most bizarre thing to experience sometimes. But yes, that does happen. Uh, it's more probable to happen to people that have done uh, a lot more acid than, than people who've done less. 
Um, I used to do a lot of acid and go to yes, Grateful Dead concerts and yes, Fish concerts. Uh, some of you right now are going to squeal with delight as I say the words widespread panic. Yes, I used to listen to widespread panic. I, I've gone to a couple of their concerts where it was just standing on the street, like uh, elbow to elbow with hundreds of people. <laughs> just um, anyway, uh, tangent. Um, but I've, I've done LSD at those things. I got hit with an LSD squirt gun at a uh, in the park parking lot of a uh, Grateful Dead concert. Oh boy, was that a night. Um, just, you know, all in all, I'd say that if I had to tally it up, uh, all the times that I've dropped acid, hold on, let me think for a second. An average of like one every, probably more than 500 times. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, I've done acid more than 500 times or around there. Um, each time was not a single tab or a single dose. Uh, there were multiple doses sometimes. There were somewhere I've done five or six at the same time and absolutely tripped balls for like a day and a half. Holy crap. Um, there is something that you, you need to realize though. I am not, uh, I'm not a good example for anything. Uh, I probably did damage my brain. If nothing else, I probably did not help my brain trauma and where that's going to lead later in life. I didn't do that any favors at all. Um, it, it is not a good idea to push yourself in any way like that. And I'll repeat this again. This is not intended to in any way glorify or condone or suggest or, or, or make it seem like it's a cool thing that all the cool people are doing. It's not, man. It can it can wreck a whole bunch of your life. And, I, you know, I haven't gone into all the negative things that it's done for me. I missed so much of my college life because of that stuff. Um, I missed a lot of my life in general because it was more preferable for me to escape into this weird, uh, bright and colorful and fun world uh, than it was to be in reality. And I think looking back on it, of course, I think... Uh, it was a very clear indicator of that I needed to find some professional help. I needed to go somewhere to to find a safe spot to talk to somebody about the issues that were pushing me towards doing that all the time. Um, it was just an indicator, a sign of something being very wrong. And it was, I don't know, it was before I discovered that I uh, actually had uh, the schizoaffective disorder. It was before I found out that the music that I was hearing was unusual or abnormal. Uh, and so a lot of that just kind of added to my life, but it was an indicator that something was very, very wrong. And I'm glad uh, looking back at it that I actually did get some help. And I don't look forward to finding out what it might have done to me uh, as I get older. So I, I hope that you kind of got a little bit of, uh, you know, wisdom or experience or something out of this. I hope that it made you uh, kind of think about things a little bit. And, and, and if you've been considering something like that, know that you are making a choice that has consequences, good or bad, uh, good or evil, uh, beneficial or detrimental. You are making a choice and that choice leads where it leads. And you should probably think about that path before you get your way down it. Anyway, that's my little blurb today on uh, the whole thing with LSD. Again, I hope it's been educational. I hope it's given you a little bit of a window into things like that. And I hope it's uh, kind of helped you to make a choice. Uh, look, in my opinion, that you shouldn't make. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. I hope you've enjoyed that. Be good, do good, and treat yourself well. Because you know what? You deserve it. All right. See you later. Bye.